mile and a quarter. This should go off about 610. $1.25 million race. Let's get it started in order with the girl, she, Torpedo Anna, going up against the boys at three to one shot. Running an eight and a seven the last two races, both at Saratoga, John. She's won three straight grade one races. What do you think about Torpedo Anna? Well, the line is certainly nice. This year she has an 11. Then she ran on a wet track, a 13, followed by an eight and a seven in her last two races. I guess she has a shot to run the seven, but she would have to run the seven because there are fast horses in this race. The problem with her is going to be the price. She's going to be short because everyone's, you know, rooting for the Philly. It's a whole big Free deal. posters, too. Free what poster happened? giveaway. Free poster giveaway. There yeah, a lot of posters. poster and everything else that comes with it. She's three to one. I would use her with a horse that I'm king, but I would never bet key this horse, no. They got to stop with the Rachel Alexandra comparisons. I love this Philly, but let's not compare it to Rachel Alexandra, okay? <laughs> She's undeniably Torpedo Anna. She's a really nice Philly. The ride that Brian Hernandez gave her, both in the Oaks, the eight, well, actually, the Oaks, the Acorn, and, and last time when she missed the break, uh, were nothing short of sensational. He, he's pushing all the right buttons. She How about the ride, at, like oh, the ride he gave her at Oakland was pretty good, too. Yeah, to tell you yeah. The- I mean, Listen, he rides this horse unbelievable. He fits her. He fits her to a tee. I, I think if he wins this race, he very well, despite the the fact that I read Ortiz is going to end up with a million more victories than him, and Flavian Pratt will end up with a lot more stakes wins. If he wins this race, I'm going to say it right now. Brian Hernandez might win Eclipse Award for Jockey of the Year. That that might be on the line here. The end of the day, though, as far as the horse herself is concerned, here's the positives. She doesn't look like a filly. She doesn't act like a filly. I don't feel like she's going to get intimidated, even breaking from post one. Hopefully she breaks a little better than she broke last time. She's tactical. Some of these other horses, they seem like they need their pace a certain way. She doesn't care. She's very, very adaptable. Here's the negative. She's coming out of her skin. She's running off. She's very, very aggressive. They wanted to take her to the gate the other day, and they weren't able to because she was so, so strong. It could be a good sign, but she's not. There's no off switch on her right now. And you want a horse who's going to listen. Because if she doesn't listen to 75-year-old Danny Ramsey who gets on her every day, she's got to for sure listen to Brian Hernandez. Because if she's going to get headstrong in the race and she's going to try and run off with the, the likes of Fierceness and Doorknock and some of these other horses in the race, she'll, lo- she'll lose the race. For me, she's the horse to be. And the only way that she loses is if she beats herself. But the way she's acting, she can. So she's a must use for me. But let's see how she is in the paddock. Let's see how she is in the post parade. She's been very, very ultra keyed up over the last week. All right. Next up. Information you're not going to get on any other show. I promise you that. Well, that's why, as John Francis said, it's the best show in the business. All right. Here we go. Is it finally Sierra Leone time? Seven to two. Now, I remember the last race, the Jim Dandy. Uh, you correctly pointed out, Chad, that the problem with Sierra Leone in that race was that there were no uh, pay setters, and that was going to work against Sierra Leone. And you were right. But this race, there are a bunch of them. And Sierra Leone continues to have an excellent line, uh, John. Uh, it's done nothing wrong. Just looking at this year's line, 11, 8, 7, 6, 5. Hasn't won in the last three races. I say it's about time that Sierra Leone gets it done. And maybe this is the perfect race, too, because, as I said, there's a bunch of pace setters here. Well, if Sierra Leone doesn't win Saturday, we're getting divorced. <laughs> I've been this horse every single race since the Derby. And I just think, like you said, actually, if you go back to his starts as a two-year-old he's never gone backwards every single race is better than the last one and you're right there is speed in this race chad brown even entered unmatched wisdom who i think will be somewhat of a rabbit here i don't know chad could correct me if i'm wrong but that horse in uh, guarantees there will be pace in the race the race sets up well for him really last time i thought he was going to win because the way the track was that day 
Uh, it was not speed favoring, and you were able to win from behind. So for that reason, I was a little disappointed. However, the line on the sheets is just perfect, and I'm going to stay with this horse. And you really may get the 7-2 to two because they have Torpedo in it a bit. They have Doorknock to bet, and they have, of course, Fierceness to bet. So you may bet, get every bit of the 7-2, to two, and I think that's more than a fair price. The sheet line doesn't match up with the watching the race line (laughs) because I think anyone who's watched him has been very disappointed in Sierra Leone, no matter what he runs on the sheets. I, I think he lost the race last time because John Velasquez rode a brilliant race. I I think that he forced Flavian Pratt to jump to the inside. This horse, if you watch his races, his victories come with that wide sweeping move that he needs to do. Can he win? Yeah. I mean, is it the story that nobody wants to root for? Sure. Is it Chad Brown wants to win the Travers more than any other race in his life? Yes. But I'm not sure that this is the horse that can do it. I think the horse you just mentioned might have a better shot to win this race than Sierra Leone. All right. The three is unmatched wisdom. Another Chad Brown horse coming off at 11 in the win at Saratoga. The other two races over at Aqueduct, wait, that was at, yeah, Aqueduct, right? Or is that Belmont? Yes, Aqueduct, Aqueduct. Yeah, that's stupid B-A-Q. It's Aqueduct at Belmont. Belmont hasn't been open for a a while. Yeah. Anyway, back-to-back eights to start his career, then the 11. The horse is three for three, so the horse has never lost. However, if you're looking at numbers, and I look at numbers, he's just not as fast as Sierra Leone, and we don't know if he'll ever be as fast as Sierra Leone, so... You know, again, he's eight to one. I think he's in the race to uh, instill more speed into the race. I think he's in the race to win. Okay. He won the prep. Look, I don't think he finds himself on the lead. I think he, that was strategy. If you watch the Colonel and Stakes back, Flavian Pratt sends his ass out of the out of the gate. He sends and sends and sends and sends, and somehow it ends up slowing it down anyway. But it won him the race. It, this horse is tactical. He's a very, very good horse. I know he hasn't beaten anybody yet, and he's not going to be my top selection, but he's a must-use for me. The four is Corporate Power, a 15-to-1 shot, getting Castellano again at six straight. Uh, finally in single digits with the nine in the last race at Saratoga, but this horse uh, is going to need a, a much bigger effort than that. Yeah, I don't like this horse. I think he's a little slow. And if you're looking for a 20-to-1 shot, the horse that Chad loved that Thistle Downs is the five batting down, and he's getting better with each start, and he certainly could make his presence felt. So I don't like corporate power. He's got to switch his leads. He's got to switch his leads. He's He's got ability. It's there. Chuck McGee's a Hall of Famer. He deserves one one more bang, one more boom like like this race. If Shug wins, I feel like it would be with, like when Alan Jerkins won with Emma's Encore, it, it would be pretty cool. And he can do it. He has the ability, but he's got to switch his leads. They put the blinkers on. They thought that was going to help two back. He won despite still switching slow. And last time, it cost him the victory and also Flavian Pratt's strategy. He's coming. I think he's one horse. I'm not concerned about getting the mile and a quarter distance while some of these. I'm not sure they want to go monoporter. He'll be running to the wire, and I'm going to use him on all my tickets underneath, and I'll play him a little bit on top because I can see some scenarios where he finally figures it out. And for whatever reason, I think Castellanos won eight Travers. He he owns this race. They should rename this race when he retires the Javier Castellano. Nobody's won more Travers than him. With horses sometimes that didn't figure. He won with VE Day. He won this race last year with Archangelo. He knows how to win this race. All right. Live long shot, corporate power. And speaking of live long shots, John, you've already tipped it off to batten down. And the sheets, uh, sheet numbers over the last four races are 15, 10, 9, and 7. So that's an excellent line. The 7 was at Saratoga, finishing third behind Fierceness and Sierra Leone. So uh, batten down is also a very live uh, long shot to get in with your exactus. Agree. Agree to disagree. I think this is the pace setter in the race. 
I think they tried last time, similar to Danny Gargan tried door knock in the bluegrass. They tried to take him back, and he did not want any part of it. He resented it. And I think they're going to have to send him. He was at his happiest and his most comfortable when he went wire to wire in Ohio. But that was different circumstances. He was loose on the lead. I don't see him making a loose lead here. I see him as a pace scenario or, you know, pace involvement. And I don't think he really wants to go mono quarter. And I see him fading. I don't like this horse. The six is a long shot. Anna Marie. We've heard, uh, we've talked about this horse enough, I guess. Yeah, no single digit sheets for Honor, Honor Nurmery, sheet numbers. Not yet, but Saturday you'll see one maybe. I love this horse in the Derby, had major, major trouble. I love the fact that Gaffleone is getting on this horse. I just think he's going to fit this horse really, really good. I don't think he's good enough to win, but I think he's good enough to get in. And he's going to be every bit of the 21, 20 to 1 he's listed as. And if some of these horses stub their toe, and I expect some of them to, I think this horse has a shot to get a piece. I like the fact that this is their plan. We've talked about Whit Bickman on the show before, former assistant for Todd Pletcher and Chad Brown. Certainly learned ropes the right way. This has been his plan since the Belmont. He didn't want to prep. He didn't need a prep. He wanted to come in fresh for the Travers. I respect anybody that has a plan and tries to execute the plan. I don't think he's good enough. And now we get to a couple of big ones here. Doorknock, 5-2. to two. All of a sudden, he can do no wrong, winning the Belmont and the Haskell in back-to-back -back races. The 7 was at Belmont, but it actually ran a 9. The, the 7 was at Saratoga in the Belmont. The race was run <laughs> at Saratoga. But it was at Belmont. Say that, say that three more times. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's a good uh, a good point because again, that was Saratoga and coming back to Saratoga. But yeah, this horse is all of a sudden uh, just uh, dominating now. Yeah, I never liked this horse. I still don't like this horse. He beats <laughs> me. He beat me the last two times, and if he runs Saturday, he'll beat me again. But at five to two, I don't think so. I love the fight this horse shows. I don't care. I don't care about the odds. I don't care about the scenario, the race, and maybe he just owns mind frame. Maybe he just his mind frame's number because he he beat him twice and he beats Sierra Leone and the Remsen. He's a fighter. He's a cool horse. I love the the not so quiet confidence that Danny Gargan's had in him from the day he bought him to the, just talking to him today. I mean, the horse is training well. He's doing well. They have nothing to lose. The, the horse has won a triple crown race. He's got a stud deal in place. He's going to spin through a farm at the end of the year. Playing with house money. And, and I don't know that he needs the lead. He didn't have the lead last time. Cesar Gray was in front of him. I, I just got a feeling. I got a feeling that, that he's going to run another big race. He just shows up. And, and we can make excuses for why he ran poorly in the bluegrass in the derby. And now we get to fierceness. The eight horse, the three to one shot. The horse that just can't run back to back good races. So we've got the career record of up and down. So we've got a seven followed by a 21, a five followed by a 10. A five followed by a 20, and now a three followed by a 15. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the horse is coming off of a three with no rest. No rest either. He just never put. Listen, Chad said it best. He says, when Fiercest wins next week, or oh, last time he ran, I'm going to get to bet against him in the Travers. <laughs> well, I'm betting against him in the Travers. He wins. I'll be surprised. But listen, obviously no one else in the race has ever run a three. The question is, is he going to be able to run the three without any time off? And again, we said it from the beginning. We said it in the, I said it anyway, in the Derby. He's never put two races together. Why is he going to, and it, why do you want to play him now when he's going to be a short price, you know, and he's never done it before. Again, he can make me look like an idiot and probably will. But I have no interest in betting that horse at a short price. I have no interest in betting that horse off of a three either. <laughs> I, 
he's he's such a cool horse. Look, we talked about Whit Beckman. We talked about Anna Marie. He's pointing to this race. He's here. After Fierceness won the Jim Dandy, Todd was non-committal about running this race. If anything, it sounded like he didn't want to run this race. Once Mind Frame went to the shelf with his bone bruising after the Haskell, and Rapoli finally decided to run that other horse in the maiden race. He won the off the turf maiden race mono quarter yesterday. Congratulations. Uh, that ran into Belmont Stakes. They need a, he needs a horse. And so Mind Frame is out. So Fierceness takes his spot. And he's doing well enough to run in this race. But I don't know that this is Todd Pletcher's plan. I think Todd Pletcher wanted to wait for the Pennsylvania Derby, have a fresh horse. He knows how fast he ran last time. This is a different race than the Jim Dandy. It sets up differently. Johnny won't be able to dictate terms the way he was last year. He outrode that field last time in the Jim Dandy. I think John Velasquez won the race just as much as Fierceness won the race. And I don't think he's going to have that opportunity on Saturday. So as much as I love the horse, he was my derby pick. I'm I'm not playing him in the Travers. All right, then, John, you've got the two. Sierra Leone over. One, five, and six. Torpedo one. Anna, Batten Down, and Anna Marie. Two over, one, five, six. Chad? I didn't see this coming. I really didn't. I'm picking corporate power on top. Oh. I talked myself into it. Very nice. I just, I just think this race could fall apart, and I can see Castellano once again winning the Castellano Stakes, and you're going to get a huge, huge price in a season of upsets and a track that's known for Secretariat losing, Man of War losing, American Pharaoh losing. I can see it happening. So I'm going to take Corporate Power. I'm going to take him on top of Torpedo Anna, Door Knock, and Unmatched Wisdom. Uh, so one, a seven, and a three. I am going to do two over four, five, and six. And uh, we do have uh, Ed wanted to ask you a question, Chad. Uh, is Anna a bigger horse than Fierceness? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it's funny because Fast Anna is not very big. Her her father is not a big horse. But maybe, maybe his mother saw the milkman. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, before I, I, I do the recap, uh, next week, uh, we, we have uh, Saratoga, of course. We have the grade one spin away. We have the grade two flower ball and the grade three Prioress. But we also have Delmar next week, the grade one Pacific Classic. Hopefully they'll have a field, a large field. Uh, also, the uh, two grade two races and two grade three races. So a very big day at Del Mar next week with the Pacific Classic. Don't forget about Del Mar for this week. Senior Buscador returns from his Middle East adventures. They Against run the horse eights. that never loses, Chosen Bron. The Chosen Bron. Oh, Bronze. very nice. What race is that? Will the Chosen Bron scratch? No. No, why is he scratching? No, he's not scratching. Okay. I mean, I didn't hear that. Did you hear that? I haven't heard anything, but well, he likes to run in races that he knows he can win. Uh, the uh, the recap of the races, uh, race number 10, uh, and that is the ballerina. John is going 3 over 258. Chad's going 5 over 318. I'm going with 5 over 7. The 11th race is the forego. Uh, John's going 8 over 367. Chad is going 6 over 51. I'm going 6 over 347. The 12th is the uh, H. Allen Jerkins. Uh, John's going 5 over 4-11. Chad's going 2 over 5-10. And I'm going 8 over 1-4-11. And in the Travers, John's going 2 over 1-5-6. Chad has 4 over 1-7-3. I have 2 over 4-5-6. And that's it for our live show, guys. I appreciate it, uh, Chad. I know you... Oh, Chad's giving us a look-see at the barn. Very nice. Very cool. Can't wait to make my way uh, up to New York to see you guys sometime in the next uh, five or ten years. Um, John, oh, I thought you were coming this year. I guess we missed I know. you. That's what I thought, too. 
But all right, guys, stay safe and be well. And thank you, everybody, for joining and hit subscribe.